Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 2 and quite frankly on and off the pitch in between episodes it's been a complete disaster like a, a literally a complete disaster I'm not a fan of what's happened and I'm a bit I'm a bit embarrassed to show you about it really but um I suppose I've got to do it, haven't I? So I suppose uh, we'll start off with uh, the injury list, actually. Maybe we'll start off with that. Uh, where can we actually see current injuries? Currently, uh, Rendell, Prince, Donker and Melgoff all injured. Yeah, obviously, Melgoff's been injured for quite a while with his broken leg. But uh, Donker, Prince and Rendell, all first-team players currently injured. Uh, we've had more injuries to other players as well in between episodes. So it's not been very easy for us in terms of injuries. Suddenly, all of them happened at once, which... Isn't brilliant. I doubt any of these players are going to be fit enough for today's episode. We've got two games coming up for you, uh, and I doubt either of them will feature these sort of players. So um, look forward to not seeing them, and probably some bad results to go with it as well. Uh, if we look at... If, okay, if we, let's look at the schedule then. You were last here for the, uh, the loss to Forest and the loss to Preston, all right? Since then, we've uh, we only won one league game. Uh, we won a cup game as well, but the rest of the games haven't been good at all. Uh, we drew 1-1 with QPR. They scored right at the end in the 87th minute to uh, to equalise things there. So we, we've been unlucky in that game. We were winning it for a long time before they scored right at the end. So we were quite unlucky there. We then came up against Millwall, who are in the Championship, but there we came up against them in the FA Cup third round and we won 2-1. So that was really pleasing. Uh, we scored two a goal very late on, very early on, but they scored one just after our second goal. But by that point, it was an already foregone conclusion that we were going to win the game. So I was pretty pleased with that one. Until we came up against Huddersfield, and again, undone by a late goal from James Morris. We were 2-1 up, and then we conceded late on, which was really, really rubbish. After that, we were trounced by Norwich at 3-1. They deserved the win there. They were the much better side. Gary Langley scored for us, but they were the better side. They deserved the goals. Once again, we were beating another team. This time, it was Sheffield Wednesday, and then this time, they scored in the 91st minute. All right, the 91st minute. It would have been okay if uh, Jason Rendell had scored his penalty as well, halfway through the game, but he didn't score his penalty. So he drew that 1-1 one, one, one from another late goal. So three games we were winning, we have ended up only picking up the one point. We could have had nine points, but no, we picked up three points instead from these draws, which was really annoying. We then had Aston Villa away in the FA Cup fourth round. They won 2-0. They're a Premier League side. We fully expected them to win, so that was all right by me. I wasn't really too upset about that result. I expected us to lose it, but... There is a glimmer of hope because last time out, we played Millwall again, this time in the league, and Lee Phillip and Lyle Stone score in the 28th and 86th minute, respectively, to make sure we win it 2-1. We didn't succumb to a late goal in that game, so that was a bit of a silver lining, but December and January, really, they're both write-offs. Absolutely abysmal months, especially after the start we had. Like We were doing so well. November, we didn't lose a single game. It was so good, and we start off in August not losing a single game either, and then we've just capitulated in December and January. We've got not masses of time left in the season to turn things around again to, to get some wins under our belt. The only redeeming factor from all of the injuries and all the losses and things like that is we still are in the playoffs ridiculously. Uh, we've only picked up the three six points since the last episode, but we still managed to stay sixth in this championship, which I think is massively impressive. Thankfully, all the teams around us just haven't been doing particularly well. I mean, Leeds and Huddersfield, they're doing pretty well. Uh, Sunderland has sort of marched up a little bit, but we're still within touching distance of Derby and Cardiff. But then, obviously, Palace, Forest, Bristol City, Norwich, they're all in touching distance with us. So the top 10, or I'd say 5th down to 10th, all pretty close. It's anyone's game still for the playoffs with 16 games to go this season. Although he's not scored for a couple of games either, Lee Phillip actually still top scorer in the championship. So that's, well, it's kind of good for us because obviously he's scoring the goals, but we've got a player valued at £7 million in our side, but he's not actually ours. He belongs to Manchester United. So we're not doing a particularly good job of trying to keep hold of him. Ideally, I want him to have a rubbish season so then we can sign him and his value drops down. And his contract it was still with United for another season. So we can try and get him on loan again next year, but I just don't think we're ever going to be able to sign Lee Phillip because he's just he's valued at £7 million and we that's more that's more than double what we've got on our bank account, I think. So we're not going to be signing him permanently anytime soon. Anyway, the first of today's two games is against Crystal Palace and we've got a little bit of a mishmash lineup out there. We've got McClement in goal as per usual. Fletcher is at the back as per usual, but then Stone comes in because Tavernier has to go in that CDM position to replace the injured Donker. Young stays where he is and Watts replaces Prince on right back. Uh, obviously, we've just said Tavernier in that CDM position. Porter stays in a deep line playmaker position, but Oddling comes in to replace... Ah, oh, no, Ross Burton's back from his injury now, actually. 
So Ross Burton was another player who was injured, but he's got 92% condition. But then again, so does Fletcher and, and Langley. And Porter's only got 90. So let's put Burton on, actually, for Oddling. I think that's probably a better thing. He's back from his injury. That's good. That's promising. So a little bit less damage limitation there. That's quite good. Uh, Pardo at left wing, of course, because uh, Russell has got his injury. Rendell, sorry, has got his injury. Uh, Langley on the right-hand side. And then, of course, Philip leads the line for us. With his 15 goals in the league, 17 overall, he should get to 20, 25 in all competitions this season, which I'm very excited about. Gary Langley, by the way, on nine goals, I reckon he gets to about 15 by the end of the season. So we could have some high-scoring wingers because Rendell as well. Where's Rendell? Down here. Rendell's already got 10 goals himself. So all of a sudden, we've got some really good goal scorers in Philip, Rendell and Langley. Oh, and that's not even the extent of the bad news. I've completely forgot to tell you about the transfer situation as kickoff is upon us. Uh, I was looking predominantly for another centre midfielder and a CDM. And... On the transfer list, because I looked at the transfer list, scouted out loads of players. On the transfer list, there were two players that really wanted to join us. And they were four-star CDM and a four-star central midfielder. And I was like, right, they're the two players that I want. Bids in, accepted. Contracts in, accepted. And then other teams came along and stole them away from us. So we didn't make any signings in the end. Uh, there wasn't anyone else there that was going to be good enough for the kind of quality that I wanted in the team. They were just going to be no better than what we've already got as our backup players. So there's no point really signing those kind of players. So unfortunately, we uh, we missed out on two big signings for quite cheap deals that we could have got for very, very good players. And I don't know, it just sort of epitomised it at the time. We were collapsing in our form. Our transfer deals were collapsing and it hasn't been brilliant. But today, we seem to be on top of Crystal Palace right now with five shots to two shots, 56% possession to 46% possession. It's just changed now. No highlights in the first half, which is obviously quite frustrating. We want to see a bit of action going on. But I'd quite happily keep a clean sheet today. A nil-nil draw for me would be a bit of progress. But half-time has come around awfully quickly. So let's go to aggressive. Far from pleased from what I've just seen from his team. A lot of players looking fired up and motivated a few of the midfielders, though, not particularly. So, that's we'll say to the midfield, um, you weren't that bad. I believe you can still improve. And a few of them looked a little bit better from that. A bit more green on the screen. Anyway, let's get on with the second half. We need to do something better here today. Although the start of the second half has been just as entertaining as the, the whole first half. No highlights yet still. And we approach the 65th minute. And I don't quite know what we can do out there really to change the game around I've got to say um for oh, I think maybe what we do is we bring we swap Pardo and Taverny Taverny goes back in for Stone Pardo goes up front alongside Philip and then we bring on Turiak for Stone at left wing that's the first option at least I'm tempted also to bring on Ron Oddling for Stan Porter Burton can sort of play CDM uh, ball playing midfielder, sorry, uh, and make Ron Oddling a ball winning midfielder because we're, we're lacking that little bit of defensive might now that we've not got a CDM. So Oddling can come on as that ball winning midfielder. There are the two changes that we'll make. We're also going to say, show some passion out there. And uh, no one's reacted to that apart from Fletcher, who looks frustrated. So that was the wrong, the wrong shout to make there, definitely. As we look to come forward, the first highlight of the game is finally here. The ball is clear, but only as far as Taverny. Don't lose possession now, lad. Pass it. Oh, for goodness sake, just passed it back to the goalkeeper. Crystal Palace forward. Jones is through. Jackson in the back of the net. You hate to see that. Oh, and that was all Taverny's fault because he just tried to be too clever with it. He should have just passed it back to the goalkeeper and they caught us napping. No no one over on the left-hand side of the pitch and they can just thread it through nicely. Jackson in the back of the net. And that, you hate to see that. Come on, lads. Oh, highlight straight away, though, afterwards. This is going to be a, a goal for us now as Fletcher gives it away. Brilliant. Now they're coming forward again. Anderson's through this time. He... <sighs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong. What am I doing? I'm not doing anything differently. We're using the same formation. We're using pretty much the same players and the same lineup from our unbeaten run right at the start of the season. And yet, for the past two months, we just haven't been able to get a victory at all. We've not been able to do anything. We've dropped down to ninth as things stand now. So we're well out of the playoffs now. We're only two points off it, but in terms of position, way out of it now. As Crystal Palace looking to come forward again and... 
Let's just get this game over with, really. Let's just get it over with. Is there a chance for us to get a consolation goal or a Palace going to grab a fourth as they look to build it from the back? Jackson on the ball into Joyce now. I'm about to sneeze as well. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It's going to happen. I, 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 oh, it's gone away just as I was about to. You know, you get that feeling when you're going to sneeze and then you're trying to concentrate not to sneeze. And now one of my eyes is going as well. And they've scored the goal and that's put me off. Oh, I absolutely hate hay fever. I hate Crystal Palace and I hate hay fever. And it's still ridiculously hot in my room as well. Even, even yesterday when I was recording, it was hot. Today, it feels even hotter. I'm not sweating quite as much yet, but by the end of the episode, I'll be sweating loads. So Lincoln United promotion bid takes a hit because we've now dropped out of the playoffs, which is really awful. Um, and now... Langley, Porter and Burton need a rest, but our game against Fulham's in three days' time. So that's good, isn't it? We just need to string like two or three wins together and then we should be okay. But, I mean, we've lost that one 4-0. That was an awful result. I'm just looking at players to scout for next transfer window. These are players that have got contracts expiring at the end of the season. And this guy he plays for Huddersfield, Ross McCrory, playing for Huddersfield. He's on £84,000 per week, right, in the championship. That is the exact same as our entire wage budget. We're currently spending 88000 so we could have our entire team or one of him and £4,000 per week left over. Like, it's ridiculous what we're competing with. Right, what changes can we make to like them? It looks like actually Jason Rendell might be fit enough to play today's game to come on for Pardo instead, which I think we will do. We'll put Pardo back on the bench, but Rendell back starting, which is really good. Donker can't start, Prince can't start, so we're going to miss those two. I think we're going to start actually as well with Turiak at left back rather than Fletcher. Give Fletcher a little rest because he is looking tired out there. Uh, I mean, Ross Burton's looking tired, but there's no one else I really want to bring on for him because he's such a good midfielder, as is Stan Porter, who's really developed this season. Stan Porter, up to four-star current ability now. Like, he didn't play last season really because he wasn't good enough, but this season he's probably asserted himself to be just about the best player in the squad, I would say, maybe outside of Rendell and Phillip, but those three are probably the best three players that we've got. They've done really well this season. Supporters really kicked on. I'm very pleased with him. Other than those two changes, though, or the one change, however many changes I made, we're not going to change anything else. I said change quite a lot there, so I'll stop saying that. We're going to go straight on to the game against Fulham today, who are 11th in the table, so they are just below us. We are at risk of falling behind them if we don't start to win a few games now. First highlight of the game, though, is coming in the fourth minute, and it looks like Fulham are coming forward as uh, they're passing it around quite nicely. And this is a, quite a worry for me. And again, I feel like I've got a sneeze coming, which is... I don't know if this is a sign. It must be a sign because, I mean, I'm, <laughs> this is ridiculous. I just... There we go. The sneeze actually came out at that time. I don't know how loud that was. I might keep it in for dramatic effects as they score a goal. But what I was about to say was, I feel like every time I feel like I'm going to sneeze, they, they go and score. So it's... <sighs> hay fever season is really not good for me if that's the actual case. Anyway, as I just blow my nose, they've, um, <sighs> they've scored another one. For... This is just going to be such a ridiculous episode to edit and watch. I mean, if you want to switch off now, please do. I mean... I don't think we're going to turn this... No, we're going to turn it around, Tom. Don't switch off. I want, I want your watch time, please, and things like that. And there might be an advert later on. I don't know. So uh, keep watching. Oh, I've had some hay fever tablets and stuff today already, but it's just not working. Go on, then. Score your third goal, Fulham. Go on. Do it. See if I care. Oh, they've hit the post. Yeah, fair play. Go on, let's grab a goal back. Come on, boys. The comeback is still on. We've still got more than half the game to go. Tavernay, last time you're in this position, there you go. He's got his pass off correctly. Now, the ball forward is absolutely atrocious, though. But Rendell into Philip. Philip gets it in the back of the net for his 16th league goal of the season, his 18th. We're back in it with a shout now. Come on, lads. That was a good goal. Stone's ball forward was absolutely ridiculously bad. But Rendell gets in there. Philip takes it past his defender, puts it in past the goalkeeper into the bottom left corner. And we're now back in with a shout of today's game. Oh, if we can grab another one just before half time, that'd be fantastic as Burton gets it on the edge of the area. Into Rendell. Rendell's cross blocks. And now Fulham trying to play it out from the back. But the ball forward wasn't good. Rendell's back on it now. Into Stan Porter. Gets it out to Theo Taverney. Burton back on the ball now. He puts it out towards Watts. Watts to put the cross in. 
Go on, lad. Get it in. Oh, Burton's now back on the ball. Burton. Porter. Porter. He could have had a crack there, but he didn't have the crack. Back to Theo Tavani. Puts out to Turek this time. This time, come and get the cross in. No, Turek takes it on himself, and it's saved by the goalkeeper. That's that's an exciting way to end the episode. End the episode. End the first half, that is. And we've got maybe another chance now. A good interception there, but Fulham do retain possession in the midfield as they look to try and just calm things down and bring it forward. The ball forward to Ibrahim is really good. With Clement forced to make a decent save. Right, I tell you what, I was very pleased from what I saw at the very end of that first half. So we're going to go passionate at half-time. Look, you know as well that first half wasn't good enough. Show them what you're all about in the second half. And that's not quite have the desired effect. Only three players seem motivated by that. I think we're going to go to all of them, passionate. Uh, you weren't that bad, but you can still improve. There we go. A bit more motivation there. We'll do it for every single position. You weren't that bad, you can still improve. Uh, passionate, you weren't that bad, but you, I've still got faith in you. Actually, Philip scored the goal in too, so I shouldn't have actually said that to him because he has played well scoring his goal today. But... We've got a bit of green now, a bit more green there on the team talks. Hopefully they'll come out of the second half. All guns blazing. We're going to shout, demand more to them as well. A few players look a bit more focused after that. Turek looks pressured though, so I hope they don't attack down the left-hand side of the pitch. So Turek just gets pressured. Look, oh, they're all fired up by their feedback. Why can't we be all fired up by our feedback? No highlights yet in this uh, second half. We're going to say get creative out there. All right, get creative. That's inspired a lot of players out there, actually, which is good. They've had a man injured as well. We're going to go on to attacking as well. Tactics-wise, what do we do to change this round? How do we fix this one? Burton's not played well, so he's going to come off for Ron Oddling. He's going to play more of that Carrillo position. I think that might work out quite nicely. Uh, Langley's not played particularly well either, but no one can really swap for him, unfortunately. So he's got to sort of stay on the pitch as things stand. So I think that's just the one change that will make for now. Is, is this a highlight or is it just because I've made substitutes that they're showing me a bit of a highlight? Because Fulham are looking dangerous as they come forward. Prizo on the ball, puts it across to their winger who can put the cross in. It's cleared for a corner. The corner though was not on the... Oh, the corner is on the highlights. Okay, that's scary. Well, seven goals conceded so far this episode, um, which is actually atrocious. There's another highlight now for Fulham as they uh, look to come forward again to uh, make it eight goals that we've conceded in today's episode. I really don't quite know what's gone wrong in the past two months. I can't put my finger on it other than we've just not been playing very well at all. But it's not like we've been playing really, really good sides. I mean, we've had games against Palace in the playoffs now, uh, obviously Leeds as well. Uh, we've had a few games against some of these teams up here, but a lot of them have been below us. And yet we've not been able to win them and stuff like that. And today is another example of that. A team below us, outclassing us really, I've got to say. And maybe the form we had at the start of the season really was just a temporary thing. This is what we should be like for most of the season. We shouldn't really... We, I mean, we said this. We, there's no chance we should be anywhere near the playoffs. And we were there for half the season. Perhaps we've now actually got to our level. Our players have sort of settled into their level now and... We aren't good enough for the playoffs, which we didn't think we really were anyway. And to be fair, I'd still take a top half finish. That would still be absolutely amazing, I think. A top half finish, another one, because of course we had one last season as well. But the playoffs, we're, they're now six points away from us. And they're slipping away from us week by week now. So it's going to take a monumental effort to turn this around and actually get into the playoffs come the end of the season. Right then, uh, next episode, we're going to go forward to the Peterborough and the Sunderland game. So that episode is going to come out to you on Thursday. And then Friday, we're going to have Hull versus Charlton for the final episode of the regular season. If we're in the playoffs by that point, that'll be quite exciting. If we're not in the playoffs, then there's not really a whole lot to play for. But, I mean, December was a write-off, January is a write-off. And by the look of things, February is also going to be a write-off. Oh dear me. 20, 2031... 2032, sorry, because we're now in 2032. This has not been a good year for us at all. It's been atrocious so far. So if somehow, after all that, you have enjoyed today's episode, please do drop a like on the video for me. I'd really appreciate that. And if you're new around here, feel free to subscribe. It's great to have you on board. And I'll see you next time then for some more Lincoln Loco action. Action.